When Harcourt Uprising was announced in 2010, the first reaction that I had was absolute surprise. It's a sequel to a 19-year-old game, Contra Hardcore, on the Sega Mega Drive, and I wasn't expecting a sequel to a game that seemed to have been lost in time. Hardcore Uprising actually takes place several decades before the events in Contra Hardcore, and it involves the uprising of the Union tribe, led by Bahamut. Like its predecessor, Hardcore Uprising takes elements from Contra and is actually a spin-off of the Contra series. It takes place in the same universe but has a completely different storyline and several things that set it apart from the Contra series. One of the greatest elements of the Hardcore series is the character selection. Each character is unique and has his or her own special characteristics and attributes. There are a total of five characters. Colonel Bahamut, the rebel, Crystal, a girl from a bomb village turned warrior, Harley Daniels, an ex-soldier who returns to the war for the thrills of it and the romanticism, Sayuri, who has a very mysterious past but is closely linked to the Emperor Tiberius, who is the main antagonist, and Leviathan, who is Bahamut's rival. You can play in the all-new Rising mode, which is a mode in which you level up your characters, buy weapon upgrades and whatnot. Or you can tackle the classic Arcade mode, which is pretty much the classic Contra experience. Three lives, three continues, no questions asked. Blow everything you can. While the previous Contra games were pixel-based and kind of made use of sprites and several other effects, Hardcore Uprising chooses a more animated appearance to it and has hand-drawn animations of each character. What I especially enjoy is the robot animations. The robots look amazing in this game and it pays homage to the original Hardcore because of some of the battles that take place on rails, on trains, on speeder bikes. While keeping everything fresh, it pays a very nice homage to the original game, as well as paying homage to Contra in moments such as the battle against the giant fortress, and other Konami games like Radius, in which you have enemies that require you to shoot the core in order to destroy them. Classic weapons make their return, like the spread shot and the machine gun, and some new ones like the Crusher Missile and the Ripple Laser. There's even a level in this game that pays homage to Metal Gear, one of Konami's biggest games, in which you have to sneak into a laboratory without anybody seeing you and hide inside a cardboard box just like Solid Snake. Each weapon has its strengths and drawbacks, and half the fun of the game is figuring out which enemies are best killed with which weapons, and which weapons best fit the situation or boss fight. Now, is Hardcore Uprising, as its name would imply, hard? The answer is yes, but it's hard in a Contra sort of way. First time you play this game, you'll probably get massacred, but as you play the levels over and over, you'll find out where each enemy comes out from. And although there is some random factors, most of the enemies are pretty much predictable once you get their patterns down. So it's that classic kind of video game experience in which the more you play it, the better you get at it. Reminiscent of the old NES, Mega Drive, and Super Nintendo days. This is a game that definitely deserves a lot more attention because no matter how you look at it, Hardcore Uprising delivers. If you want an action game, it delivers with flying colors. If you want a challenge, it certainly does deliver the challenge. And if you want a game that pays homage to Konami's long and rich history, most definitely it brings it all. Needless to say that if you actually beat this game, you can consider yourself a hero.
And if you get that reference, I salute you.